Now we are in our development environment, which is a Jupyter Notebook. In this environment, we are going to demonstrate our flow. These are the steps to achieve our goal. Um, and we are going to go through these steps one by one throughout this uh, demonstration. And the first step here is that we need to specify a configuration file, which will be used by our pipeline mechanism. After we define the configuration options for our pipeline, um, we are going to uh, create a pipeline object by using our Grayflow SDK. So let's do first some imports, uh, importing Grayflow. Uh, then we are going to run our, uh, or we are going to create the pipeline object by simply importing from Grayflow orchestration pipeline. And we simply just pass in the, uh, the configuration uh, file path. So when we run this, uh, we'll see that the pipeline is being uh, uh, initialized and it will initialize all the configuration objects for each step. And after that, it will also initialize the objects for each step in the pipeline. After we initialize our pipeline, uh, we are going to execute the first step in the pipeline, which is creating a model for the application. It has three sub steps, the data loading, model loading from GML model zoo and model fine tuning. So let's go ahead with the, uh, the first step loading the data set. So let's take a look at how it looks like. So the data is simply having bounding boxes around hands and faces. So for example, here there are two sub sub subjects and here there's one subject. Okay, the second step in creating a baseline model is that we are going to load a pre-trained model from our quick start library um, as known as model as well. So let's run this one. And now a model is being downloaded from our model zoo. The third step in creating a baseline model is fine tuning this pre-trained model on Kitty to our custom data set. So for that, we are going to use another API from our Grayflow SDK, which is the SSD trainer. And it comes from Grayflow, MTK, training, SSD trainer. So now our model is trained for 300 epochs. And at the end, we get a mean average precision of about 90%. This is a pretty decent MAP. So let's uh, make a few predictions with this model. Let's take a look at how it looks like. So here, this is the first image. Uh, we have a false positive here, uh, which was already a bit of a hard scene. And then this one worked quite well. Also for this image, it works quite well. Now we are complete with creating the baseline model. Uh, the next step is to optimize the model, which is the pink blocks here. We first need to convert our trade model into the gray model format, and then we are going to quantize that. And after that, we are going to have the optimized mobile net SSD here, which is ready for model compilation in the next step. Let's convert uh, this model, the trained model, on to the gray model. So for that, we are going to use an API, again from our uh, SDK, uh, the MTK conversion model converter, and uh, we are going to import the model converter class here. So let's run this step. As you can see, we have now a gray model, which is quantized using 8 bits, uh, using our preparatory quantization scheme. Now we converted our model to gray model format, uh, which allows us to run analysis. Um, in a realistic way uh, for accuracy, power, latency, performance, and sparsity. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's run this one. So the analysis is now complete and we can see the, uh, the MAP after the uh, conversion to gray model and quantization. And the next thing we see here is the how the network will be mapped onto our uh, chip. So here you'll see the layers and uh, how many cores they would take. And the number of minimum cores required to map this network is 44, but to utilize uh, the maximum throughput, uh, the simulation is run um, using almost all cores. So here we have a few metrics uh, regarding the uh, multiply accumulate operations and what would happen after uh, doing our gray model conversion and quantization. So we have about more than two and a half point uh, gain. Uh, the spikes is the number of events in our uh, chip. Uh, and then here we also have more metrics such as latency and the, uh, the power consumption and energy consumption and so on and so forth. After conversion to gray model and the analysis, uh, now we are ready for compiling our model into a binary model format uh, as shown here. After that, we can deploy our model to the uh, gray VIP platform. So for this, uh, we are going to use uh, the, the compilation API uh, from the Grayflow ML toolkit, and then we are simply going to run compile, which is actually quite straightforward. 
So after a couple of minutes, the compilation is complete. That means we have a binary uh, model artifact that we can uh, push onto the Gravy IP, as you can see from this message. Uh, and the last part in our flow is the deployment and inference. So for that, we also are going to use uh, APIs from our Graveflow MTK, simply uh, from deployment package uh, and under the app module, we have the ML app class. So basically, without leaving the Graveflow environment um, uh, the, or the flow, a, a user can um, develop its model, uh, train, optimize, run everything and eventually deploy. So let's take a look at some results uh, that we recorded uh, as a video file. Thank you.